Hi, everyone. It's uh, Thursday, 3.30, and I made the decision actually yesterday that I would do a live today because, well, for a couple reasons. A, because it's been two weeks since I have done one, and one of the reasons for that is Last week, when I thought it would be fun, I was in Orange County for a charity gala to do a pop-up, which was amazing. It was to benefit Olive Crest, and Olive Crest is actually one of the charities here locally in Seattle and on the east side that I'm heavily involved with. And so it was just really neat for me to go down to Orange County and partake in a Wine, Women, and Shoes down there and support a charity organization that I already love and admire the work they do. Olive Crest, um, they offer foster care for at-risk kids in the local community and uh, really provide all the needed services for the foster family, for the, for the child. Um, to make sure that these kids don't keep getting moved around like they typically do in the state systems. And so it's just a really win-win for, for everyone. And they've got so many beautiful stories that come out of it. Anyways, all that to say, I had planned or I had, I had said in my newsletter, my email, because no one likes the word newsletter, but if you aren't signed up for my non-newsletter newsletter, <laughs> you can go to my website and sign up. And um, for those of you who aren't signed up, you get 20% off your first visit. So you get to see lots of pretty pictures and learn about some of my musings. One of them was to do a Facebook Live with my mom when I was down in Orange County and have her choose maybe five of her favorite things. But between the gala and going to the beach and, um, we went to go check out Saddleback Church too. It just ended up being a lot. And then mom wanted to watch uh, uh, the Miss Maisel show. So instead of doing that, I wanted to come on this week and talk about favorite, my favorite things. And when I was folk, when I was thinking about what should I feature, I was like, okay, maybe it should be things with flowers on it since it's like springtime. And then I was thinking that we get to wear white again? Is that still a thing? I don't even know. So I was like, well, maybe I could do some of my favorite pieces from the shop that have white in them. And that sort of morphed into what we're going to, what I'm going to showcase now are some of the favorite pieces that are black and white, which I know is not very springy because black and white is so kind of in the box. But I love wearing black. And now that I guess we get to wear white, although who, I think, I think we've all been wearing probably white even through the winter. So, and I chose for this particular um, Facebook Live, I wanted to wear this top, which I got in Kenya. And I thought it sort of had an interesting motif and maybe probably would be thought too difficult to accessorize at some level just because there's so much going on. So I started with putting on a pair of earrings that also have a little bit going on with them as well. These are one of the new pieces from, actually this was the, this particular earring I got when I first got, discovered Gabby Vilches in um, Oaxaca, Mexico. And while you've got all the detail of the embroidery, which is all hand done by local women in Oaxaca, and you've got the multicolored tassels, I still think it's a really pretty set against all the design in this particular top as well. So the point of wearing these earrings with this top was to show that even though we do have a lot going on, I feel like you can get away wearing a pair of earrings like this with this top and it doesn't like, it doesn't overwhelm. I also, I just threw on this particular necklace too. In, in sort of the theme of silver and black, white being the silver, is uh, this particular necklace is from Bali, and the Balinese are known for their silversmith expertise. This particular piece, however, was designed by a Japanese expat who lives there, and if you were to look at it, it's, I don't want to say they're like beads of silver, but they, but they sort of are beaded onto this strand, and then this 
black grayish element here is pyrite. And this necklace is so exquisite and simple and it's probably, I'm going to take these earrings off right now because it was really, when I was doing a little pre-shoot prior to um, coming on here, I had these earrings by Dublos in, which are brand, 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 brand new in the shop. And Dublos, as many of you know, is a high fashion accessory house in Sevilla, Spain that is led by two male designers, Pepe and Alonso, who've been doing this since, so check this out. Okay, I'm, in, in, I'm interrupting myself because what I love about their pieces is just how exquisitely detailed they all are, so much so that they brought the detail of this exquisite earring to the back. But um, so Alonze and Pepe, who've been doing this for over 30 years, they work to imbibe the flamenco spirit and the sensuality of the dance into their accessories. And they do beyond a spectacular job, I think. So this, is, this was the original ensemble that I did a mini Instagram story with and did some photos, but I thought these all worked brilliantly together with black and white being the theme. So pretty, those earrings I love. And sp sticking with Dublis with the white, because these ones were just added today to the shop. And these are smaller ones as well. A lot of Dublis earrings are, are big. In fact, I'll show you quick. I brought this one out just to show a difference in size. So this is like true flamenco, right? You can see how big this would be. This is honestly too big for me, but I know there's women out there that would swoon to wear a piece like this. What's unique about this piece, these particular earrings, is those are all balls of, um, like beads of mother of pearl. And they were all hand placed on there. But imagine, <laughs> Imagine doing flamenco dance on these ones. <laughs> Anyways, these ones are probably a little bit more my speed, maybe a little bit more your speed, but still uh, on the trend of white. It's all hand placed, um, sort of uh, shards of mother of pearl, if that makes any sense. These would be brilliant for a bride or a sundress, but also go brilliantly with this lovely top from Kenya too. And I have this ring on, which is also from Turkey. I only have two of these rings left. These are Druzy Quartz rings from Ibrahim in Turkey, in Istanbul. And I met him, goodness, when did I meet Ibrahim? Probably like four or five years ago. In fact, I was just talking to him on WhatsApp right before I came on here because he's sick right now. And I need him to get me a pair of earrings. And he's like, Jen, I still can't get to the shop. So so I probably also need to talk to him about getting more of these rings. This particular one, this ice blue stone you see in the middle is natural druzy quartz and hand placed around it are crystals. And these are all set on sterling silver and they all have adjustable bands. So there's a particular side like right here that isn't attached so you can make it bigger or smaller. I love to wear these rings on my middle finger. I've had people run across the room um, asking about these rings. They're just lovely and sparkly and a little, a little piece of statement and you can easily mix and match them with other, I don't have any other ring on right now to prove this point, but they look good with other rings on your hand or, um, or alone. So I'm gonna take these guys off. And I'll do one more Dublos before I move on to some other ones. But I, I think these could be one of my favorite earrings, these black and white earrings by Dublos right now. And believe it or not, they're not from the new, look at the sparkle, holy mackerel. So pretty. But they're not one of the new ones. I just love the dichotomy of the blue and the white. And I so see this because I've been doing a lot of galas lately. I think I, I think in gala talk, um, 
I just so could see this at a gala or a night out. I just, I think it's exquisite. And so as far as black and white's concerned, this could be one of my, my complete favorites. And I, I know I just talked about Turkey and Ibrahim, but I don't think in any of the Facebook lives to date, I have talked a lot about Hussein Songtong, Sagtan, who I first discovered in Istanbul when I met Ibrahim, so four or five years ago. And Hussein is actually quite famous in Turkey. He's one of the most notable Turkish jewelers there. He's self-taught. He reads lots of history books. And he's inspired by ancient women and the Ottoman Empire and the designs of, of the, uh, the sultans and the royalty of the Ottoman time. And so he has been discovered, too, by Hollywood. And his pieces have been used in movies like The Other Boleyn Girl and Troy. There was something else. Oh, The Hobbit. Um, Anyways, so we have we have some of his pieces in the shop, and this one I think is exquisite with the freshwater pearls, the onyx uh, center piece. It's all gold plated bronze, and then you can see the tassel, which is lovely, is mini seed pearls. And this one, I actually did have this on with this particular shirt, and I thought it. I thought it actually, I thought it, I thought it could work. Maybe not perfect, but I thought it could work. I'm going to take this necklace off right now too. So, but his pieces are simply exquisite. And I have people who come buy his pieces in the shop um, because you really can't find his pieces in a lot of other places unless you're at the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. And, since I don't know about you, I don't get there every day. <laughs> you could, uh, you can buy them in my shop. Anyways, beautiful. And what will we pair with? What will we pair with? I think you guys all know that I love everything Eric and Liddy. It's a husband and wife designer team from the north of France. And we just got a few of their pieces, a few, a lot of their new pieces. And I wanted to make sure I at least featured one pair of earrings, but I actually have two by them. And, they, and this particular pair of earrings is a post. And it's a bouquet of flowers that you get to wear, wear in your ears. And what's unique about their pieces is how detailed they always are. This particular one, here, I'm going to grab the other one so you can see some of the detail. This particular one, they've got the gold-plated petals, the Swarovski crystals, the uh, seed pearls, and just so you can see the back. It's all uh, antique brands. There's no nickel in any of their pieces, so it's all hyperallergenic, but sweet. They have, um, Eric has gardens, of course, so he's inspired by gardens and, and or nature, I should say, nature, and vintage pieces, they, they have bees and they have a beautiful garden that they always invite me to come see and stay with them when I'm in Paris. So one of these days I'm gonna have to uh, take them up on that. In fact, I go to Paris in June. I don't know if that's the time that I'm gonna take them up on it, but um, so this one, so this Eric and Liddy has the black and then I grabbed another Eric and Liddy, which I'm gonna show it. See, it's a little bit too white. This one has the white. And this is more of the drop pendant earring. And you can see the, actually I'll put it on this side so you can see the difference in the, in the length. But either of these earrings too, I think can go, you can dress up or dress down. Oh, this earring is really pretty with this shirt really pretty because it's subtle so the design of the shirt kind of is enhanced by this by the design of the earring really pretty I like that one this one's neat too 
but with this shirt, I think I prefer. I prefer. <laughs> So those are some Eric and Liddy, and then the Hussein Sangtong. This one's 104. I'll put the links to all of these in the um, in the comment section when I get done here. But um, just to give you a sense of price point, I believe this one's 145. These lovely post earrings, I believe, are 98 dollars, as well as the other one. Um, Okay, so moving on to, there is in the shop these wonderful beaded necklaces by these women, a group of um, Mayan women near, near a lake called Lake Atitlan in Guatemala. And their pieces are literally exquisite. So this is one of the white necklaces and this is 12, strands, 12 or 24, I think it might be 24 strands, Ugh, I don't have time to count, I think this is 24 strands, and it's all hand beaded, they use a glass beads that they're able to get from the Czech Republic, if I remember correctly, they don't get them from China, I know that, they get the best beads basically that they can get their hands on to, and the price points of these are $38, and I'm certain you can't buy a more elegant necklace and for sure one that hasn't that you can't find one that was made with more love than this but these this white one I is exceptional and I think with a sundress absolutely this one could go from day to night too but just beautiful not great with this shirt kind of gets kind of gets lost but you get a sense of how it drapes and how beautiful all the different strands look and you've got the silver the silver beads with the white really beautiful so there's that option and then and then this next one so this one is a 24 strand one because what I'm going to show you next Assuming I can get this little guy off, is a black version, black and white and silver and gray. And this is 12 different strands. You can see the, the amount of work is immense. So it's all hand beaded, like I said, by a co-op of Mayan women that live in uh, live in Guatemala in uh, near a lake called Lake Atitlan. It's surrounded by all these beautiful volcanoes. It's a spectacular place to visit. I took a hike up to go watch some of the onion farmers one day. It was really neat. I, I also thought too, as I was like hiking up this mountain and there was like, like a cliff next to me. And I'm not sure if anyone knew like most places where I was. And I thought, Jen, if you fall, <laughs> it could be a very long time till someone finds you. <laughs> but I do know how to say help in Spanish. So <laughs> actually a lot more. Anyways, so you can see all the beaded, elements or excuse me the detail and these ones these ones don't quite drape but you still have the strands which give it this like beautiful loose look and like I said this this shirt for these necklaces don't do the best for displaying them but you can get a sense too of how shiny they are I love these necklaces like I said, for the price point, they're $38. There is likely nothing more elegant, beautiful, and something that has been made with so much meticulous or um, attention to detail and, and love. So they're kind of a must have. And if you, if you prefer colors, there's beautiful seafoam greens, uh, blues, there's a, uh, like a magenta pink. Anyways, good. I can I can just actually I'll put the link to all of these particular necklaces because they're beautiful. And for one more beaded, when I was in Mexico this past January, I met this lovely um, woman named Naomi from. Uh, she was, she's from, she's indigenous. Atomi is the name of her indigenous group, and. She lives about four miles from the city of Puebla in Mexico. And Puebla, if 
if anyone, you know, we, we talk about Cinco de Mayo here a lot. Well, the Battle of Puebla ha happened in the town of Puebla. And my last morning as I, as I was headed to Oaxaca, I went to the market and ran into this lovely woman and her two kids and her husband, and she had all these beautiful beaded necklaces. And I've almost sold through all of them. And not that I got like a thousand or anything, but I, I picked up a few, but at some of these pop-up events I've been doing, they kind of sell like water. So I wanted to feature one of the, the remaining few I have of Naomi's because I think this one's really special in the sense that it has sort of a choker design to it and so much intricacy. And while it's not white, white, I, I felt like this, it was a white silver. And let's see. Oh, I can never... I'm not going to put it on all the way, but you can get a sense to see how it, it lays. And again, super exquisite. This one isn't in the shop. The price point on this is $58. And I think you could easily, you could put this, you know, you could even, and not that it's turtleneck time of year, but you could even put this, have a turtleneck on and put this on over it. And it would just be such a beautiful addition. Gosh, black, gosh, blue. And what's neat about what Naomi did with this particular one is um, she has like, there's the ball and the um, latch, but you can make it smaller because you have the options of all these different, um, different latches. So if you want to make it like a higher choker or have it be lower, there's absolutely that possibility. And I, when I look at, when I look at this, I don't, I can't, quite line it up, but I think you understand what I'm trying to do. Um, okay, a couple more things that I wanted to show off. And since we're sort of talking about silver, I haven't ever, ever featured on any of these Facebook Lives anything that I've picked up in Malta. And the last time I was in Malta was probably about three years ago now, but I still work with one of the artisans there. His name is Matthew Borg. And um, I... I went to Malta, I don't know if I went to Malta knowing that they had a filigree tradition or not, but quickly became aware when I was walking down the streets because there were a lot of shops that did feature beautiful, the intricate filigree work. And as you all probably know, filigree is when artisans take threads of, in this case, sterling silver and sometimes gold, and they create very beautiful, intricate designs almost that almost look like lace when they get done. And they solder it all together. And in the Mediterranean, specifically Malta, Italy, Portugal, which you guys have seen some of the pieces from the shop from Portugal, have a strong tradition of filigree because the Phoenicians were the ones that came in and uh, spread the filigree uh, jewelry uh, technique, if you will, through the Mediterranean basin. And the Maltese are very proud of their tradition. And because I hadn't shown off a lot of pieces from Malta yet in the shop, I wanted to take time to do these two because these are beautiful. And I've actually been selling a lot of them. So I was like, mm, maybe I need to talk about them more. But this beautiful bracelet this one isn't adjustable. It's probably about seven inches um, and super stackable. And then this particular ring, I just think is beautiful and unique and is adjustable. And definitely, since black and white is our theme, would easily go with all things black and white. But there's so much detail, so much detail that goes into these little, the filigree work. I'm always so mesmerized by filigree. Love it. Okay, and then lastly, I actually had a couple more things, but I think I'm going, I think, yeah, we're at 23 minutes. I don't like to go beyond 25 minutes. I think it just gets too long. But this, these particular designers, okay, I, I don't think these young women are designing anymore or creating anymore because I found them goodness gracious. I want to say like five years ago when I was in Paris and it was two beautiful Chinese women who had graduated from one of, and they were young women. They had graduated from one of Paris's 
most prestigious hot couture design schools. And they were making jewelry that literally took my breath away. And as I was thinking about black and white pieces, I remembered that I had these pieces and they are in the shop. I've just had them for a while now and, and frankly I've forgotten. But I brought out two of their pieces and like I said, these are like the pièce de résistance, right? A little homage uh, <laughs> of France. And this particular, so what they do with their work is this particular, so it's onyx and freshwater pearls. And in this particular design, what they've done is they've tried to replicate, replicate a hot couture uh, textile design. In this case, it looks like lace, but beautiful necklace, just really exquisite in its design and its elegance. And you can see, so I don't, I forget what the price point is on this, but there's kind of a little similarity in these two necklaces where you have the, this one has the pyrite, that's, this one has the onyx and then the pearls and the silver, but still kind of neat how you have this element that breaks up sort of a more predictable design and just the pearl lace work. And then to, to end, and this is completely an heirloom type piece and remarkable in so many ways. One of the ways, again, this is made by these two Chinese women. Their names were Dong Li and He Chong, if I remember. Um, Mao, Mao Dun was the name of their, uh, their line and Mao Dun means contradiction in Chinese. It's amazing I remember that stuff. But this particular necklace, so it's long, it's a natural ribbon that has these beautiful gold specks in it. They again have taken this hot couture um, embroidery technique and created this beautiful, the light is really bad on this right now because you can't get a sense of just like how intricate it is. But basically they've taken crystals and pearls and the natural ribbon and they've threaded it all together in a very couture fashion and you tie this on and the joy of I guess the tie is that you can make it sort of as long or as short as you want and this is going to be probably the worst dress on the planet to show you this necklace because it's going to compete but again you can just see like how incredible this this particular piece is and they have again you've got the black so it's a little bit of surprise element from the rest of the necklace but this piece and I believe this piece this piece or its sister piece was featured in um, one of the local magazines here I think they had a bride wearing it but it's, it's absolutely stunning. Like I said, it's an heirloom piece. It's all made with traditional hot couture techniques. I don't, I'll, I'll never see anything like this again. And so we have uh, this particular, we have three pieces by them left in the shop, but super superb. Anyways, so there you go. That's a little tour of favorite black and white pieces in the shop from around the world. I think we got Spain and Malta and Mexico and Guatemala and Turkey and France and we got we got a few in there but let me know if you have any questions um, I am here I will do another one of these next week I have to think of a theme so if anyone has a theme idea for me let me know because I want to make sure I'm talking about things or showing things that you all want to see so would love to take suggestions thank you for joining me always always fun to come on here it is okay the kiss and I'll put the links to everything in the little comment section over here and just PM me or email me if you have any questions. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Thanks, guys.